Yeah, good morning friends. In this video, we are going to study the introduction of computers. Let's see the definition. The definition of a computer is, a, it is a programmable electronic device designed to accept data for performing mathematical and logical operations at high speed and display the results of these operations. Mathematical means maybe arithmetic operations and logical means and or and not. Let us move to the next slide. The first computer was introduced by Charles Babbage in 1837. The name of the computer was Analytical Engine. It is a mechanical computer. It has occupied almost a huge building. Let us move to the next slide. The first computer which was programmable was named ENIAC and was designed by J. Presper, Eckert and John Mackley at the University of Pennsylvania in 1946. It occupied around 1,800 square feet and used about 18,000 vacuum tubes, vacuum tube, vacuum tubes weighing almost 50 tons in weight. Let us see the generations of computers. We are having totally five generations of computers. And the first generation computer was during 1942 to 1955. They was based on vacuum tubes. The name of the first computer was Invac and Univac. These are the first generation computers. It was something like this in a huge building. This is an example of a vacuum tube. And this whole building was made up of vacuum tubes. The second generation computers was introduced in 1955 to 1964. These computers used transistors instead of vacuum tubes. These computers use transistors. It was designed by John Burden, William Bratt and William Sockley at Bell Laboratories in 1947. It was somewhat lesser in size. Only a room used to get occupied. Now, this part was called as card reader punch. This particular machine used to perform card reader punch. And this was the part where the console used to have. We used to have the console. And this back side was the CPU. And these four things are called as tape drives. This one as well as these four things are the tape drives. In those days, we used to have huge tape drives. Nowadays, we can see a tape drive similar to an audio cassette or a video cassette. And this one is the line printer. In those days, this much huge line printer we used to have. Let us move to the next slide. Third generation computers were introduced in 1964 to 1975. These are based on integrated circuits designed by Jack Kilby in 1961. The size of the IC is a quarter square inch. A single IC chip contains thousands of transistors where the computer was further diminished on a single desk. The computer became smaller in size, faster, more reliable and less expensive. And this was the first integrated circuit computer where there was mouse, there was a keyboard and a CPU integrated with a monitor. And this is the integrated circuit. For example, and next one is fourth generation computers. These are the computers which have been from 1975 to present era. And these computers are based on microprocessors. They contain thousands of ICs. It was designed by Ted Hoff in 1971. By Intel, the name of the computer was Intel 4004. It used LSI, that is large scale integrated circuits and very large scale integrated circuits, VLSI. And it was reducing the size of the computer very drastically. It may be an AMD processor, Intel processor, that may be any laptop system, a mobile phone. It comes under fourth generation computers. It uses latest microprocessors, that is Core i7 processor is the latest one as of now when we are recording this video. Let us see the fifth generation computers. These are from present and beyond. Scientists are working on fifth generation computers. These are completely based on artificial intelligence where we are going to deal with the robots. Computers can understand spoken words and intimate human response using different types of sensors. Now these artificial intelligence robots are using voice user interfaces instead of character user interface or a graphical user interface. They are using voice user interfaces. 
one of them which is undergoing under research is IBM Watson. We are also having Sophia. Many different robots are there. Now this IBM Watson is an example of outsmarts Harvard University students. Let us see the example of IBM Watson. Let us see the next one, the operating system, because a computer runs on operating system. Without operating system, a computer is nothing. A operating system is most important software that runs a computer. It manages the memory and processes as well as its software and hardware. It also allows us to communicate with another computer without knowing how to speak the computer's language. The operating system allows to communicate. Without an operating system, a computer is useless. Let us see some of the three types of most advanced operating systems nowadays used by most of us. That is Microsoft Windows, Mac, Mac OS X and Linux are the latest ones. Let us see the Microsoft Windows is created in mid 1980s. The many versions are there. Some of them are Windows 10, Windows 8, 7, Vista. Many are there apart from these XP, 95, 98, Windows NT, many are there. Windows comes preloaded on most of the new pieces which helps to make the most popular operating system in the world and moreover it is a user friendly graphical user operating system and this is the logo of Windows operating system. The next one is Mac OS X. This is related to Macintosh operating system. It is created by Apple. It comes preloaded on all new Macintosh computers or Macbooks. Many versions are there. Some of them are OS X, EI Captain, Yosemite, Mavacus, Mountain Lion and Lion. Mac OS X uses, uses are less than 10% because of the cost incurred to maintain and moreover it is more secured. And Apple computers are supporting these operating systems. Next one is Linux. Linux is an open source operating system which means they can be modified and redistributed. Distributed or redistributed by anyone around the world. The advantage of Linux is that it is free and there are many different distributions of versions you can choose from. Linux users accounts 2% where most of the servers are using Linux operating system because of its own security reasons. And it is relatively customizable. This is the logo of Linux. Let us see the hardware and software parts. Hardware. All the electronic devices or macroelectronic equipment in a computer is called as hardware. Examples include motherboard, a hard disk drive, RAM, power supply, processor, case, monitor, keyboard. Yeah, let us see the definition of software. The term software is used to describe computer programs that perform a task or tasks on computer system. Software can be grouped as a system software that deals with operating systems, etc. It may be a utility program like antivirus, maybe a check disk, format, fragment, etc. And application software means those softwares which we are using in our daily basis. That is a word that means be any business application or a solid works or Photoshop, whatever it may be the case. Let's move to the next unit that is system unit. A system unit is the main container of the system device. It protects the del delicate electronic and mechanical devices from damage. It is the box or the chassis is called as a system unit. It includes motherboard, CPU, that is processor memory, disk drives, ports, power supply, expansion cards like sound card, network card, graphics card. If it is not available, you can place. Let us have a look of this chassis. Next, we are having few peripherals that are connected to a computer. Peripherals are the devices that connect to the system unit using cables or wires technology. Typically, peripherals include one is monitor, keyboard, a printer, plotter, scanner, speakers and many others. Now in this slide I haven't shown what is a monitor, keyboard, printer, scanner and speakers because most of us know all these things. The only thing which is new is a plotter. A plotter plots. Next is the processor, an integrated circuit supplied on a single silicon chip. It function is to control all the computer functions. The main processor manufacturers are only two amd and ethylon ethylon is for the desktop and turin is for the mobile in for in intel pentium is for the desktop and centrino is for mobile these processors are the latest ones apart from these two many are there let us see what a computer program is a computer program is a series of instructions 
when a program runs the processor carries out the instructions in the orderly fashion in the order which you are going to type in the same order the cpu is going to perform the operations some of the typical instructions are arithmetic instructions that includes addition subtraction multiplication division is next one is logical it compares the data and act according to the results the next one is move operation most oftenly the processor is going to perform move operation moving the data from one place to another file another place the file from one place to another place if you want to execute a program the program will be available in the hard disk or the storage device from there it is lifted to the processor so it is moved let us see the processor speed measured in megahertz the process speed is measured in megahertz or gigahertz the speed of the system clock speed we are going to say sp clock speed or gigahertz or megahertz with respect to the processor when we are going to concentrate on the speed of execution one megahertz is equal to one million clock ticks of every second one gigahertz means one billion clock ticks and latest trend is multi-core processors means more than one core will be there internally in the processor like the two cores or three cores etc let us see a random access memory it is the primary storage main computer memory data programs currently in use are held in ram whenever you execute a program you load a movie you play audio file it must be first loaded into ram and ram is volatile means the once the power is lost the whole data is lost from the ram and it is module means this black blocks on the ram are called as modules let us see the motherboard motherboard is also called as a main board or the system board the main circuit board for a computer system all devices in a computer system will either be a part of motherboard or connected externally as a peripheral device let us see the these are pci slots where you are going to connect peripheral component interface slots if you want to expand your system maybe you want to connect graphical card maybe you want to connect a modem any external tuning card then you are going to place it over here and this one is called as a chipset and these four slots are the ram slots that are provided to us and this one is a cmos battery and these are this is the power supply provided to motherboard and this is id if you want to connect to a hard disk and these are the ports here you are having keyboard port and mouse port then you are having parallel and serial ports here you are having usb ports some more usb ports you are having here and here you are having audio pins audio jacks can be placed over here Mm. and this is the processor slot where you are going to keep the processor on that a fan is going to get fixed let's move to the next slide let's see the power supply a computer power supply has number of functions it converts ac current alternating current to direct current it transforms the voltages from 240 volts to the voltage required by the computer computer the computer requires 12 volts to handle disk drives because they have mechanical parts 3 point plus or minus 3.3 volts and 5 volts plus or minus for circuit boards in the computer and this is an example of smps switch mode power supply which is at the back of you this is this part is at the back of your cpu next one is hard disk a hard disk is a metal disk contains of platters platters means plates is coated with tiny iron particles which can be magnetized to north and south to represent the binary digits zeros and ones a read write head is used to magnetize the particles on the disk surface to represent the data held in ram the computer can now be switched off and and a copy of the data is safe on the later for later use let us see the hard disk now this round disk like cd is is the platter it is made up of ceramic glass where the data actually gets stored and you can see the read write head over here it is going to perform read operation and write operation let us see monitors a computer monitor display images generated by graphics card monitors are mainly of two types one is called as liquid crystal display or crt cathode ray tube 
olden days computers which are huge in size are the crts and lcds or tcds are the present generation monitors which are very flat in nature so this is a lcd computer which is 19 inch wide screen lcd let us see keyboard keyboard is the primary input device as you know you will be having typing keys you will be having numeric keys keypad where you will be having numbers to the right hand side of your keyboard and on the top you will be having functions keys f1 to f12 and some more control keys may be there like your delete key insert key page up page down many are there you can check your note keyboard let us see the mouse mouse is another input device which is have which is used nowadays most oftenly for 90 percent of the graphical input it is a 90 percent utilized graphical input device we are having mainly two types of mouses one is called as ball mouse nowadays it is not visible at all it will be having a ball instead of a sensor and we will be we are having present day we are having optical mouse which has a camera takes thousands of images per second and sends them to the digital processing it is having a led and this is the optical mouse and this is the example of ball mouse here you will be having ball here you, will be, you are having lcd mouse this is optical mouse so keyboards are of two types one is called a squatty keyboard another one is dwarf keyboard only the layout of the keyboard is different in qwerty keyboard in qwerty keyboard you are having q w e r t y as a second line in the row in the second row you can see q w e r t y that is the present utilized it is the keyboard which is present utilized by us qwerty keyboard is having in the second line you can see q w e r t y in a sequence and this is the most utilized keyboard nowadays we are also using the same one and the next one is dwarf keyboard this is the layout of the keyboard let us see the number system we are having binary number system octal number system binary is from 0 to 1 and of 0 or 1 octal is 0 to 7 hexadecimal is 0 to 9 then a to f and decimal system we know 0 to 9 let us see how to count if a binary number is given how to count it is for example 128 is represented as 10110101 wherever one is there you need to if you check the index here if you check the index over here these are called as indices these are called as indices now wherever one is there you need to multiply the one with the adjacent index for example here 1 is there so 1 into 1 plus 4 into 1 plus 16 into 1 wherever 1 is there you are going to multiply with the index into 1 plus 1 into 32 plus 1 into 28 finally you are going to get the result as 181 which is binary equivalent of decimal in the same manner if you convert the decimal into octal you are going to get 265 in the same manner for hexadecimal you are getting b5 and most often the numbers we are having signed values and unsigned values 0 to 255 is unsigned and minus 127 to plus 127 these are signed and unsigned values let us see the operations we are having boolean operations to 0 represents false and 1 represents true and here we are having and operations or operations xor and not these are the two tables 0 or and 0 is 0 0 and 1 is 0 1 and 0 is 0 and 1 and 1 is 1 if both are ones are there then only we are going to get a 1 otherwise it is 0 let us see the or if any one of them is 1 then we are going to get 1 as a result 1 or 0 or 0 0 the rest are ones xor if both are same we are going to get 0 otherwise we are going to get a 1 means 0 or 0 is 0 1 or 0, 1 xor 0 is 1 1 xr 1 is 1 that is 0 xor 1 is 1 and 1 xor 1 is 0 let us see the memory representation memory is represented in bits and bytes let us see the first one is bit where you are going to store the binary digit either 0 or a 1 next 8 bits is called as 1 byte 1024 bytes 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobytes is 1 megabyte 1024 megabytes is gigabyte gigabyte to terabyte terabyte to peta peta to exa 
x r to zeta v yata brown tabot byte and geo byte this is the latest one <coughs> let us see the file system in windows operating system we are having c drive d drive those are called as disk one disk two where in c drive you will be having documents programs programs like word and excel coming to disk two you will be having configuration data like folder one configure that is config file and data files configuration files as well as data files in this two we will be having configuration files data files in data files you may be having your folders folder one folder two your own folder by the name and in coming to linux operating system unix operating system you will be having the root one as the slash then you will be having user directory home directory in user you will be having local bin lib emacs x11 emacs and x11 are user defined directories the same manner in home you are having ali and nihar these are user defined directories let us see the file types which are available exe executable file app file unix requires requires x files then coming to data files you are having dot txt music files dot mp3 images dot jpg gif and movie files mpeg movie vob avi many are there binary files are represented with a bin extension and coming to special cases in unix standard input std in standard outputs std out and standard error what is a program a program is something like how to cook it is an algorithm are you a programmer these are the different questions you are going to ask yourself whenever you are going to write a program for example you want to write a program how to cook so this is an example you need not much concentrate on the example as of now first of all you need to heat the oven to some extent then get the ingredients ready like your bowl flour butter sugar milk eggs we are actually baking a cake then mix the ingredients thoroughly in a bowl then pour the mixture into a baking pan then bake the oven for 50 minutes repeat bake 5 minutes more until cake top strong if it is strong you can stop the baking process okay, okay. certain extent otherwise it is going to burn so this is how you are going to write a program step by step what you are doing you are going to do first then next then so on let us see the pseudo code this is an example of a gaming monopoly just a small pseudo code in this fashion you are going to write the code let us see the flow chart this is one example flow chart where you are going to have some symbols a flow chart is a pictorial representation of a step by step given problem for example oval represents start and end of the program flow lines to represent the flow parallelograms denotes input and output a rectangle is going to represent or denote your processing where you are going to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. And the diamond is going to provide you the condition statement. Whether the condition is true, you are going to do something. Condition is false, you are going to do something else. So next, we are also having one example. For example, here you are going to have, first we are having start, then throw the dice, move the token number of a special spaces equal to sum of dice. Small gaming app is there. We need not worry we are going to see different types of flowcharts in our forthcoming videos this is another example of flowcharts which is in detail so first one is sequence we are going to entry this is the entry point then statements are executed then exit now coming to a conditional statement you will be having entry point decision activities if condition is true you are going to perform activity b if the condition is false you are going to perform activity a or you may even change the directions and then exit in the same manner if we are having a looping statement so this is the process what you are going to do test some are entry control some are exit control okay you need not worry we are going to study these things it's coming to languages we are having low level languages high level languages object oriented high level languages and virtual machine based languages and scripting languages from source code to object code how you are going to convert for example, Fortran, C, Pascal, C++ are going to use compilers and linkers and basic and Perl are going to use interpreters to convert and Java is going to use intermediate both interpreters as well as compilers and compiler is faster execution but slow in debugging whereas interpreter is slow in executing but faster in debugging and intermediate is slow because both we are going to combine. Nowadays, we are having most demanding programming languages where you need to get placed. More number of jobs are placed. Yes, this is the small chart which represents in which if you learn what, 
you are going to get more jobs sql is having a highest demand than java javascript c hash python c plus plus php ios ruby and rails so this is the chart based on this chart you need to plan your future and for all these things the basic is c so you need to learn c thank you guys so this is the end of our present video